three, maybe? Was it take three? Man, the levels on this setup. Not happy with it. Not happy with it at all. Kind of all over the place. But as neither here nor there for you on the far side, um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good day, good early morning, good late night, depending where you are and when you're um, sitting down to do this. This is Architectural or Architecture 530, Environmental Systems 1, Lecture 6. We're going over single number descriptors. Um, this very well could be the most le misleading portion of acoustics. Um, single number descriptors are helpful if you know what they're describing. Um, they can get you in the trouble if you don't know what their limitations are. And so we're going to do an overview of these. But if you um, decide that you want to go into explore acoustics more, um, and want to venture over to Architectural 520, Architectural Acoustics, um, we delve into these full bore, um, and di dissect these up, and when do we use them, don't use them. Um, from a professional level, um, I use these early when I'm programming schematic design, design development, about halfway through design development, I would switch over to levels and frequencies so I can um, more accurately predict what's going on in the space. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you see a breakdown of architectural acoustics, it's usually room acoustics, noise control, isolation. But as I've pointed out, I like to flip it the other way. I like to do noise control first because um, in the previous lectures I've given, um, I've talked about that if you can't keep the noises um, and the background noise in the space to an appropriate level, isolation and acoustics really doesn't matter. And so when we're getting into single number descriptors, what we're looking at at noise control is NC, which is noise criteria. We'll break that down. There's also room criteria. Um, you just need to be aware of it, that it exists. Um, we're not going to use it in this class, but no, it's there. Um, and then A-weighted level, so DBA. It's most closely to um, NC, the way the curve is, and you'll see here in a, here in a second. Um, and then there's DBC. There's also Z, DBZ, which is filterless, um, and that's what I prefer to design around. But if I'm having to match to a single number descriptor, I want to use the closest measurement to it um, with the curve that most represents where I'm going. Um, just to make that, that my life simpler. Um, but all in all, when I'm designing or when I'm measuring, I usually want the raw data. I want a flat room. Um, if I'm designing, and then that way, who's ever using it can adjust from there. And we'll hit on a little bit of that um, in reverberation and next, why a warm room can run away from you. Um, so we're going to look at NC today, DBA, how they compare, what we're looking at, how we will use them later. And then for uh, noise isolation, we've got STC, which is sound transmission class. And then we have TL is transmission loss. Um, STC is the laboratory measurement that you see on the spec sheets. Transmission loss is roughly equivalent to that um, in the field testing. If you wanted to get closer, we would do NIC, noise isolation class. Um, and we do a lot of that in 520, but we're not going to do it in here. We're not going to do noise isolation class um, on how that's measured. We're just going to stick to STC in the schematic design world, um, but be mindful that STC and TL are not the same. And I'll touch on that when we get there. And then we've got room acoustics, RT60. Is that really um, a single uh, number descriptor, right? If I tell you a room is 0.8, what does that really tell you? It doesn't work. Um, and then noise reduction coefficient. How absorptive of material is. So what we're looking at is covered away of a room and um, where we would use this. So when we're talking about 
the um, the uh, background noise, the NC, the n noise criteria. We're talking about all of this noise that is in the room here that's coming from this ductwork, right? So the ductwork's in the room, noise breaks out here. Um, we've got noise from breakout from supply, so we've got breakout from return. Um, and then we've got supply airborne noise, return airborne noise. So we've got a duct here with return air and it's just opening it up. All of that is coming from here. So our NC, our noise criteria in this room is based on all of these. Um, for transmission, the STC of the wall that we're designing to is what blocks this specific wall transmission so whatever this level is over here and whatever that contour um, what the levels are at the various octave bands um, we can predict what's getting through this wall by figuring out what the stc the sound transmission class of this wall is um, one thing to note the difference between figuring out what the noise level is of these we've got to add these sources together we also has a have a distance um, limitation that we'll go over when we're attenuating db um, we haven't touched on that yet but this is logarithmically adding these four sources together but when you're talking about transmission loss or sound transmission class um, it's a straight reduction attenuation so if our source is 90 db we'll use that loosely and our wall is STC 55, then 90 minus 55 gives us 35 on this side. So roughly we have a room from this wall of a uh, NC 35. Now if all um, five of these are, uh, if all five of those are, uh, 35 at a 35 level um, then we add then we add those five sources up and so if we have five similar sources that are all 35 um, DB we've got five sources of that so this room would be a 42 Oh, you can't see it. This room would be 40. So we got these five, these four sources here. We've got this one coming through. If they're all 35, we're hypothetically talking here. We don't know that yet. Um, and so we have five sources of 35 dB. Um, our level in this room would be a 42 dB. So we'd have an NC 42 room, which could get us into a, a little bit of trouble. So let's let's revisit our friendly friends over at uh, NASA um, so look looking here we've got a bunch of single number descriptors um, we've got time um, so we're just showing different things now we've got background noise so we got noise criteria to NC and it goes from 45 to 40 35 and 30 and so if you revisited this, you probably got an idea of um, what area you like. The problem is with this kind of example, um, what does STC 20 and NC 30 sound like with maybe a reverberation time of 0.8 instead of 1.25? The orders of magnitude in this example um, move quite a bit. So we've got isolation from the gym that probably on this side over here um, we've got background noise of sounded like the mechanical equipment in this space and then we drop the reverberation time down which is directly related to the volume of this space by what the nrc the noise reduction coefficients of these materials are so let's look at um if we look at just in welcome everyone Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, buddy. He's all excited to talk. So now this is just noise criteria. Um, NC. And this goes the other way, opposite of what the last example 
then it goes 30, 35, 40, and 45, 50. Um, and now we can start to look at um, what the curve is, right? You might start seeing now this is not flat. It, it is not saying that um, this room is 30. Um, so 30 would be right here, just a flat curve, right? So you need to be lower in the higher frequencies, and then it gives you um, credit, allows you to be a little bit louder, higher level in the lower frequencies, and that's directly related to how we hear. We'll look at that when we look at DVDA. But let's take a look and let's take a look and let's take a listen um, and see how how this works. Which one which one is is the best and which one can we live with? Welcome everyone to the ninth annual symposium on artificial intelligence. Now everyone get ready. We're gonna spend several intense days together listening to speakers, attending workshops, etc but we'll also have some fun and we'll have some downtime in between. Now, if you look in your folder on the yellow sheet, you'll see that on day one, we will concentrate on the development of computer capabilities for intelligent behavior in complex situations. Welcome everyone. Um, let's go over here. We can see the chart a little bit better. Um, so we're not moving up a lot in level at the low end where we're really moving is is in this speech band as we're going up and it becomes harder to hear what he's saying on there um so this is good at being able to describe how loud a space is um, and what they can expect in other spaces so if you're working with a client and they have a space and you're doing the analysis and you're saying um, yeah, we really need to move the mechanical equipment away from this room so we can bring the background noise level in your acoustically sensitive space down to a proper level so that um, you can facilitate education in this room. Um, if you don't have something to compare that to, um, you can say, hey, your existing classrooms are um, 35 right now. They're very quiet. Um, background noise wise in terms of a classroom but what you're leaning to the way you want to save money raises that up to a 50 um, so you can use um, those objective measures to um, list that so we, we've got NC um, let's let's take a look at STC so we're talking about what it sounds like so if you imagine um, he's in here and this equipment is getting louder as he moves on on his NC. Now, what does it sound like if we change this wall construction? Same level on this side. Now we're just changing this wall construction. We will be um, We will be increasing STC. And you'll notice um, the curve's inverse, basically. If you remember the NC curve was going this way, the STC curve goes the other way. So this gets to be quite a conundrum if you're letting more low end in and you're not blocking that low end to begin with. Um, you can get a lot of low end in the room and it gets to be hard to control. Welcome everyone to the ninth annual symposium on artificial intelligence. Now everyone get ready. We're going to spend several intense days together listening to speakers, attending workshops, etc. But we'll also have some fun and we'll have some downtime in between. Now if you look in your folder on the yellow sheet, you'll see that on day one, we will concentrate on the development of computer capabilities. Angie Johnson earns the smile for intelligent behavior in complex situations and program synthesis. Followed by an afternoon of miniature golf and a fajita dinner. Now on day two, we'll have hands-on workshops 
dealing with multi-source information integration and autonomous robots. Followed by a crawfish boil and karaoke. So we can see as um, we're moving up our STC, it's not a straight number. We're still getting a little bit of low end on there. And um, if we were doing recording or we were doing distance learning, um, we're doing um, streaming, we would pick up that low end. And it would start to um, manifest itself in artifacts on the other end. So we've got uh, background noise in the space. This wall transmission directly um, adds to that. But if we don't fix this mechanical equipment here um, and we get that level down, it's really relevant what we do with this wall because these sources will be much louder. Um, the other thought is that that you'll see brought up a lot is well as if this room is loud i just need to put fuzz on the wall i need to bring a reverberation down and that's only going to get you about 6 db total so background noise descriptors um how we describe mechanical noise um and this comes off of measured sound level levels for the equipment um, and sometimes that's expressed by nc or dba um, if you look at a projector cut sheet which we might later um, not in this lecture but in another one of noise producing equipment in the room uh, most pieces of equipment cut sheets have a uh, acoustic data sound power level um, sound pressure level some sort of indicator on there and you just need to be mindful of what they're giving you um, dba is not that helpful and c is not that helpful because it's a single number we don't know if it has a lot of low end in it or it's flat across there um, and if we don't have that data we can't um, do that analysis accurately on there um, but a lot of times you're matching these single number descriptors to what's an expectation um, so this is from ASHRAE. So you're taking the single number in C and matching it to a living area to get to 30. Um, and so it can be helpful in that sense, but still this number is not telling you everything. It's not telling you what it, what it sounds like. It's doing some averaging um, and it's giving a lot more weight to the low end. So when, when we're plotting, when we're figuring out what an NC is, um, what the NC curve is. We're actually taking data. So we already have the data at the octave band. So we're taking levels at each octave band. And then it's a straight curve. Not a straight curve. It's a it's a fit, fitted curve. But it's whatever the um, furthest outlier is. So in this case at 250 hertz. Um, that is crosses the curve at 40. At an NC 40. Um, the problem is if we're giving the given that this this room is an nc40 we don't know that we need to control at 250 hertz we don't know that we need to address something at 250 hertz um, it could easily be um, kind of a flip that it's not this 250 hertz that's an issue maybe it's down here at 4k we're up um, at around 38 no that'd be 40 which way oh, i'm on the other side this is NC, this is um, level dB. Note, it, it is referencing 20 micropascals for our sound pressure level. So our sound pressure level, if um, we're at 2K, is around 39, 38. Um, we could be at an NC 40 from there. And so that's the misleading part of um, NC value, but it's used everywhere. So it's helpful. When starting, you just want to know what your limitations are. The other one is DBA. Um, and DBA is similar to NC, to noise criteria. Um, it, the, the curve's slightly different, and we'll, we'll look at that here in, here in a minute. But you'll see it um, used to describe 
noise levels um, or ambient indoor noise levels. It's still a single number descriptor. Um, it's used for new noise produced by mechanical for HVAC, VAV boxes, pumps, transformers, amplifiers, servers, and continuous noise sources. So it can be helpful if you know what it is, but it's not a flat curve. So what you can't do is you cannot take a, a, a dB reading. You can't take a dBA me measurement and then apply that, that weighted curve to NC and get a proper NC rating. It'll get much lower. So this is the offset. Um, dBC is... Um, was used in mechanical. If it was Z, it would just be flat. So as you can see that we're really, we're really bringing down on this curve, the low frequencies on here. So if we're already, if we're already having STC, if we remember looking at STC, right, um, we're already letting that low end energy in. And then if we're not counting that low end energy in our rating in a DBA scale, um, we're letting a lot of low end into the space um, through that wall. And that could be detrimental because you can't just put a, a, a six or eight, inch, eight inches of uh, absorption up, the, up on the wall. It just doesn't work. Um, it, is a, it is a sound pressure level measurement using um, a weighting and a filter. Um, and it, what, what it's good at doing is predicting annoy, annoyance because, um, it matches hearing acuity pretty well. Um, so if it gets too high on a DBA, if it's too high on a DBA, it's really too high on a unfiltered on a flat measurement. And, and what I mean by that is if we're outside the range that we need to be, for a piece of equipment so if we're 5 10 db higher here um, if we apply that to a flat measurement that's not weighted we're way we're way over on that so you want to be mindful of that that if we're comparing two numbers you want to make sure that they're both a weighted or they're both um, flat non-filtered um, rolls off that low end as we talked about um, and so it's really just ignoring the low end on there. Um, and the, the basic assumption is we're not sensitive down there, so we really don't have to worry about it. Right? It makes other equipment look better. I much prefer just a flat weighting. No filters, just measure the level, and this is what the level is. Um, if you have that uh, uncolored data um, that's not moving, it's much easier to make a prediction on there. The next one is um, isolation. So we're going to look at STC and, and transmission loss. So sound transmission class and transmission loss. And essentially what that's saying, um, if you remember an example previously about the uh, noise from the wall coming through there, what we got is we have a 100 dB source room doesn't matter what's in here, just that this this room is loud, similar to the example of the dance club over here, right? It's irrelevant what it is. It's just this room is loud. So this room is 100 dB. Um, if we put a uh, 45 STC wall in, we have 50 dB on the other side. Um, that's the order of magnitude that we're looking at. That's a benefit because you can look at these constructions, um, so if we need a uh, 45 wall, if, if we're fine with it being 55 dB on this other side, we know we can't do standard construction. We know this is um, uh, standard 5 eighths on each side with uh, uh, standard 2 by 4 um, stud walls. If we put insulation in that, that's not going to work. We're not even close. If this needs to be 45 to get to 55 of our target, um, we're off by 39. Um, we're going to have to go 50. And what's interesting to note about this is I, I hinted at, at transmission loss. So STC, sound transmission class, is the laboratory measurement 
of that material. That is the best that you're going to get out of it. And um, transmission loss is what we measure in the field. There's another one, uh, noise isolation class, that's more closely uh, compared to sound transmission class. The problem is the measurement's convoluted. It takes a lot of time, and nobody ever wants to pay you for that. So um, transmission loss is used a lot. So if you're designing and you need a 45 um, reduction in your barrier, whatever your barrier is, um, you want to add five to that for the field because um, you're probably going to lose a 5 dB of attenuation based on field conditions on there. So in that case, um, if we have a 100 dB source, we want to be at 55 on the other side. We need a reduction of 45. We want to use the STC 50 wall. And that's, that's quite a bit bigger uh, on here. Um, this is uh, typical wood studs, but what we've added, we've added a resilient cha channel over here. We've made this resilient. We've, st we've stood that off, and it's got a resilient connection. That way, any noise or energy that hits this wall acts like a trampoline or a drum, drum head and is absorbed in that panel instead of passed on um, through the wall. That's, that's why this wall, the only difference is there's a resilient channel on this wall that brings the wall out, the uh, gypsum um, finish on this side, brings it out about three quarters of an inch. So just by doing a resilient connection, you go from 39 to 50 and you'll hit your target of where you want to be here. So this is a... Uh, diagram of what uh, transmission loss is similar to STC and then the way that we figure transmission loss is we create a source on this side so we take a, a big loudspeaker out in the field we induce a bunch of noise similar to this right so if this if we were testing this barrier here um, we'd make a lot of noise like like they were doing here and we make it um, using a reference signal so we know how much energy we're outputting into this space and then we measure on the other side because what we're looking at um, is we're looking for what D is how much energy gets through and then how much energy we put into the room we're really we're not concerned with what's reflected back um, which will affect reverberation time and we're not concerned of what's absorbed in the panel all we're worried about is what gets through that partition. And so that ratio gives us our transmission loss, and we can measure that and then um, plot that to see if we've met the design requirements. Um, sound transmission class is the uh, laboratory measurement. Um, it's a single number rating for comparison of building elements. But again, we don't know um, we don't know where it is on the curve, right? If this is the partition um, insertion loss, we don't know if it's because it's at, it's not performing well at 500 hertz, at 8,000, at 63. We just don't know from that single number what we need to improve or change, um, and where that could be is if we go back. To, to, to we go back to our initial example um, if we don't know what frequency this partition is efficient at we could change the source so if we we look at um, STC if we're we're too much energy at at 500 Hertz and that's that's causing us to go from an STC 40 wall to a 50 wall because that that construction just does not um, perform well at 500 hertz what we could do is we could change this right and so th think of a scenario where it's not performing well at 500 hertz but this partition is doing well at um, 4k to 8k right we have enough room up here um, to take care of that uh, we could change this the source to be more tuned to have more high-end frequency um, if we just know that we need a an STC 45 wall and we don't know why, 
um, we can't make that adjustment because we don't have all the data. We do not have um, the frequencies that we need to control and we, we don't have the levels of those frequencies. So that's where it can become a little bit misleading um, on the performance wise. Again, they're good in schematic design programming and early SD. Um, after that, you want to uh, transition out into um, more octave band and third octave band data. Um, it's not, STC is not addressing low frequencies, right? You, you're starting to see a trend develop here. Um, NCs weighted in the low frequencies dba is not really affected by the low frequencies if you're not blocking these low frequencies in right if you're not considering the low frequencies in the measurement data and you're not blocking the low frequencies in the um, isolation design then you're go going to have a lot of low in coming from one space to another on there um, and you can estimate this we're, we're not going to do this this is just provided for information um, if you want to use it to figure out what how big a wall you need when you're working on your studio project. It's 16 log uh, weight of the partition plus 15. So 16.8 log of the weight of the partition plus 15, and that'll roughly give you the, the STC of your partition. Um, reverberation time, um, saving equation. It's a direct ratio of volume to absorption in the space. Um, so whatever your volume, however big it is, what that absorption is in the space um, times the constant 0 0.049 if you're using the King's units or 0.16 if you're using what the rest of the world does. And then there's also Ehring's equation. And we're not going to run these equations. We do, the, we do uh, modeling and we do spreadsheets in 520. We're not going to do that in here. This is just to give you an I idea of um, what these single numbers are for reverberation time. Um, and you calculate reverberation time. Um, the absorption is per octave band. Um, so you can look at the um, different octave bands and how much absorption and how much more you would need. Um, Ehring's equation is very similar. What he what what he came up with is um, he's also taking the absorption of air into account because you get a little bit of um, um, bonus absorption up into the higher frequencies, um, and then taking a uh, natural log um, of the average, which comes out very similar to um, the total absorption. If you take average, it's, this is just a weighted average on here. Um, and then we've, we're looking at absorption for reverberation time. So when we figure out what this absorption average is here um, or what our total absorption is here, um, that is sound absorption data across octave bands multiplied by the area. So we've got all the octave bands per area. Um, we can figure out how much absorption we're going to have in that room. What you'll see a lot of people marketing is um, noise reduction coefficient. This is another single number descriptor. The problem with this number is it's only looking at um, 250 hertz to 2,000, right? So we don't even have a full band from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And if you uh, remember STC um, and DBA and NC, we're not figuring in what's happening down here at 63 and 125. So um, if we're looking to get some absorption and knock that, that level down, either in the mechanical room or on the receiver room, it's not gonna work because it's not figured into NRC. This is why this is a, a dangerous number. Um, so if you look at this and you you want um, absorption of 0.35, and you assume you're getting absorption of 0.35 down to 125 hertz, you're not getting it. Um, so we've let a lot of low end in 
um, due to not measuring it with a single number descriptor for NC, describing what our target background noise level is in the room. We are not figuring in low end from the mechanical equipment um, on the other side of the wall when we're looking at STC or transmission loss. And now if we use NRC to figure out our reverberation, um, we don't have a room. We have, we'll have a warm room, which is beneficial for music, but the issue is we're going to be letting a lot of mechanical, low end mechanical noise in. And um, it's just not going to work well. So you can use these numbers. Just be mindful of the limitations um, on these numbers. Um, they're, they're helpful as starting points, but when you're doing full designs, um, when you get to 520 or 521, we'll really look at that. Um, when you're looking at picking out finishes um, for spaces that you're designing, starting with NC um, is, is good, but if you've got rooms that are acoustic sensitive rooms, um, these aren't corridors, these aren't um, bathrooms, these aren't closets or storage rooms. That's that's not where you would consider this. These are for um, video conferencing rooms, classrooms, music performance, recording studios, those types. Um, so if you have um, something like that, these single number descriptors um, that we just touched on um, are good starting points, but you don't want it in there. If you're using this for um, bathrooms, um, hallways, you want to knock down a little bit of background noise in the hallways. These are beneficial. So that's single number descriptors. Um, we'll move on to uh, the next topic. Have a good day.